Hello everyone. In this tutorial, I will explain how can we implement orchestration saga design pattern with Spring Boot and with Kafka. So first of all, we need to understand why we are going to implement orchestration saga design pattern, right? So let's take one example. When actually any user is trying to place an order or like maybe trying to purchase anything uh, means anything from the e-commerce website. Then we can say the order will be placed successfully means suppose there is one product actually and that particular product actually you are going to purchase. So this particular pro product actually having some price. So that means maybe uh, let's say like this particular product uh, may be 300, 500 dollar or something the price having right. So whenever the user trying to purchase this particular product then user should have the sufficient balance into their like uh, credit limit or the balance right and also like uh, whatever the product we are going to purchase from this uh, e-commerce website or whatever it is the inventory also should be available for the product right so that means two scenarios need to be done like first the balance to purchase the product and second one is the like inventory should be also available for the product otherwise we are not able to place the order successfully right so the demonstration wise like whatever i explained over here so it look very simple right because this is very easy to implement in a monolith application suppose we are handling this particular all this transaction like uh, checking the balance checking the inventory so those kind of thing entire things actually doing in a single workflow means monolith applications so that means it's it's easy over here either it means uh, we can commit the transaction or maybe we can roll back the everything in a single db concept right isn't it but if we think the same situation with distributed system with multiple database then it will be going to be very complex right why it is complex because for this situation we need to create multiple microservices based on the module right for example as we are going to uh, like uh, means there is a product related things or maybe we are going to discuss something about the um, order related things uh, so let's check this one like suppose this one like we are having a place order then product uh, deduction and the update inventory right so that means we are going to create three microservices based on this situation right one is the order microservice second one is the payment service third one is the inventory service so the order microservice is actually uh, responsible to uh, like place the order and then from there actually it will call the payment then update inventory from the payment right now as we can see and also this particular each ms having the separate dbs so we don't have any control right suppose we are whenever the any request is come to the order microservice then we are entering one entry into the order table for example then order actually call the payment microservice from the payment actually we are inserting uh, checking the like balance kind of thing credit limit and the balance then actually we are inserting data into the payment table for example and then next for the inventory we are checking we are uh, checking the like inventory is available or not then we are updating the inventory accordingly now suppose the scenario is occur means we are like trying to uh, uh, order is placed successful now we are going to the next step like in the payment uh, section in the payment if the payment is failed then what we need to do we need to roll back the order also right correct the same thing if the payment is successful then it will go to the inventory if the inventory is failed then we need to roll back the payment as well as all, all uh, means we need to roll back the order right so this is the situation where actually so this is a situation actually where actually difficult to manage this type of transaction it's called a distributed transaction so that's why like using saga design pattern we can manage transactions or data consistency in the distributed system means in this particular scenario data also be like not maintaining the consistency right so that's why the, using the distributed management transactions like saga design pattern we can manage those consistency of the transaction also so saga design pattern can be implemented like in two approach one is the like uh, choreography pattern and another one is the orchestration pattern so choreography pattern already i explained in one of my video i will like share this particular link in my description section so that you will, guys can follow this one and regarding the orchestration so in this sections or in this session i will explain how the orchestration saga design pattern actually working right 
next like let's check out like how it is i think it is clear if not clear please do uh, let me know in the comment section so that i can answer those things and don't forget to subscribe my channel okay next like uh, this uh, the saga design pattern something the architecture wise i am trying to demonstrate something like in this way so it will be something look like like uh, Actually, what it is happening in this uh, orchestration saga design pattern, we need to introduce another microservice actually. It's called the orchestration microservice, this one, which actually basically communicate with some other services. First, the order image, order microservice, which is basically, as we discussed earlier, like this is responsible for uh, placing the order, like whenever any request is coming, so it will coming in this microservice. And then we have introduced another microservice, which is the order orchestration service. And this basically microservice is communicating other microservices like payment microservice, inventory microservice. If suppose delivery microservice, that I am not adding over here just to because it will be then going to be very lengthy. So just to short demonstrations, I am just defining only two MS. One is the payment, another one is the inventory. So those actually talking is happening between this by using this microservice. So this is basically comment this one and comment this one. If both are success, then we can say success. If one of them is failed, then we can roll back the order microservice. So let's take like and uh, Kafka is basically used to like uh, like uh, our order service actually receive the create order command and uh, raise an order means it will push the data into the Kafka and accordingly actually orchestration is uh, listen those uh, data and it will process accordingly it will create one request uh, two requests for this payment and the inventory accordingly it will call those things and without actually blocking the response it will directly initially like uh, throw the response something like order created order completed something like this or maybe order created and then once it will successful from all these microservices then the status will be updated from created to the completed if by any chance if it is failed in this microservices then we can say it's a order cancelled because obviously the order is not placed successfully so we need to mention it as a order cancelled right so this is like overall architectural diagram of how this like orchestration saga design pattern actually work in real situations and kafka is used basically for the non-blocking kind of thing because you know like uh, it's a uh, event based so we need to push uh, means uh, pops up kind of thing means uh, we need to publish something we need to consume th something so this is all about this orchestration uh, saga design pattern architecture kind of thing in the next like i will uh, demonstrate how we'll going to the write those code in a uh, real man so that i can give some demonstrator over there like how it will be look like so for the time being like uh, i will just create one simple architecture for this one so instead of real db i will try to demonstrate using some kind of means uh, pre-populated data in the hash map or some kind of thing so let's check out the code so for demonstrating uh, orchestration design orchestration saga design pattern so i have already created like four microservices inventory microservice order orchestrator microservice order service and the payment microservice payment service actually okay so actually i have created another thing like parent pump as you know like this actually dependencies so for the dependence wise i have used the web flux for the non-blocking kind of thing cloud stream for the like kafka spring kafka and then lombok just to avoid the data setter test you can ignore you can ignore this one so these are the like basic and uh, this cloud dependencies so these are the like main the web flux one cloud stream and stream minder kafka so uh, so this is the overall thing and uh, uh, so regarding the pom one parent pom so this particular pom actually i have used uh, like if you're going to the inventory ms so here you can see like i have you annotated this with this parent pump so we don't need to add any uh, any extra dependencies if it is required particularly for this microservice then only we need to add those dependencies over here else all the things will be taken care by this parent pump so i have created uh, all these like uh, microservices which are required for these demonstrations like was uh, in order orchestrator order service and the payment service 
so let's create the code so like uh, we can't uh, start the coding uh, for invest microservice so what do we need basically here we need to first actually create one controller which uh, actually for each microservice actually we need to define two endpoints one is for the credit another one is for the rollback right means credit means like suppose if we are going to the inventory microservice then for the inventory microservice we are going to create uh, two microservices uh, two endpoints one is the for the deduct another one is for the add right so let's create one package over here controller then here what we will do we will going to create another class something like uh, inventory controller okay So we need to annotate uh, this particular class as it will be a controller. So we can annotate it with REST controller. Okay. Next, uh, we can adding mapping like uh, inventory. Okay. Then we can like uh, create uh, two method over here. One is like for example public void deduct. and public void add means add this particular service will be called in case of any rollback right so this method will be a post mapping and the mapping should be like deduct and here it will be it will be also a post mapping and it will be add so obviously if it is a post then obviously we need some kind of request in the request body right so for this what we can do okay okay so this is the skeleton is done now we need to create some DTO right so let's create another package DTO So here actually we need to create uh, uh, two basically details one is the request another one is the response right so let's create another class for example uh, inventory request DTO okay inventory request DTO okay so we will not keep more fields just few fields we need to keep like private integer user id means which user basically is uh, trying to do this particular request next private integer product id for which product id actually it's uh, i means we need to do the perform any operation like uh, kind of the adding or uh, removing deduct or add then we can use EUID because we are going to some RDMS so that's why uh, this particular is required over here so this is done now so we can annotate it using like as we are using the going to use the long box so we can use like getter then setter and then also like with that also two string is we can also use so this is a request now we need to like create the response in the similar way we can create the response so let's copy this one request response okay so in the response we need little bit of uh, changes over here order id is fine order id is required product id required product id is required order id and user id what else in the response we need to show we need to set some status right Ki what kind of status it is so for that maybe we can create one enum over here like for example inventory status okay here actually you can t okay not class actually it's a enum we need to create one enum ok 
okay then the value will be available and unavailable okay so this is done now and we need to use this uh, enum particularly in the response dto okay so how we are going to use this one like private inventory status here this okay so this is done now like request and response structure is done now now here in the controller we are going to add this one like request body here actually we are going to use this request request dto request dto and here also we are going to use the same request dto okay next what we can do we will write some service class which actually basically is responsible for basically responsible for uh, doing the like adding and uh, kind of deductions so those kind of things will be done in the service layer so what we can do instead of like we can obviously connect with uh, the database at whatever database we can use maybe oracle mysql in memory database so those actually we can do but uh, just to for demonstrate purpose what we can do we can create one map and over there we'll try to like simulate the same thing so let's create another package like service and here we can create uh, another class for example inventory service class inventory service okay first we can annotate it with the service annotation okay next actually we can like uh, create one map which will having the feel like uh, integer like it's actually mapping with the like as we are maintaining the inventory so obviously inventory will be maintained for the product right so for the product we are having some id and then the how many ids um, how many products are available right so it can be integer integer as we are all the things will be are integer so the name should be something like uh, uh, inventory map okay typo next like we can create one post construct block so here actually we can define uh, means we can mapping those things mapping means we initialize those data into the map okay okay so inventory map dot put like for example we are having the product id 1 and like uh, the uh, stock is 2 okay next like uh, for example is a for 2 is a 3 product 3 it's having a 4 okay here we need to initialize this map else we are getting null pointer exception right new has map okay so initialization is done now now we can write uh, two method actually so one method actually responsible for deducting the in means uh, inventory another one is actually add inventory right so let's write the code public deduct okay here actually you can uh, pass this particular request inventory request dto okay for the timing i am keeping as a return time as void okay 
inventory request DTO and okay so first what we will check we will actually get uh, get the like quantity get or default so what will be the key we need to pass as a like product id so from where we will get this product id request detail dot get product id right if we getting this fine else we will return zero okay and we need to assign in some quantity okay next what we can check we need to check like if this particular quantity is so whatever the quantity is available over here if it is greater than zero then it's fine then meaning like it's available right so here actually we need to create uh, one instance for this uh, response DTO because ultimately we need to pass this response DTO right inventory response DTO inventory response DTO okay so what we can do if it is greater than zero here actually we need to set status as available dot available okay and also like we need to update the inventory correct so what we can do we can like update like put so what we will put over here this product id and we need to update the inventory like how can we do that like whatever the quantity we are getting from over here should be minus one right so this is done in case of the success scenario but if uh, like uh, okay uh, finally we can return this one but return this okay but if it is not uh, like greater than zero then we need to set something over here dot set order id dot set product id dot set user id and dot set status the status will be uh, in mint status so it will be a unavailable right so from where we will get the user id from the request request dto dot get user id request dto dot get product id request dto dot get user order id okay so this is done now this is done for the deduct we can create another method which will actually basically public void add okay here also actually we need to pass the same request and this particular method will be called in the in like actually in the uh, in case of the rollback okay so what we can do we can actually just add this one so how can we do that map and then actually compute if it is absent sorry if it is present so what can we do over here we need to get the product id and here actually we need to do some kind of stream kind of thing key value pair and next whatever the value that will be increased by one okay okay in case of add we don't need to return any response so this is done okay this is overall looks okay and finally what you need to do finally actually from the controller we need to call this services right so here actually we need to do auto where private 
inventory service okay you can return from here directly return this dot add okay sorry it will be a deduct we need to return this one okay so this is done now next for add we don't need to return actually we just what you can do just need to add we just need to call this one so this is done for the inventory let's try to run this one Okay, it started. Okay, it started now, right? And it's uh, started in the 8081. This particular port I defined over here. Okay, because as you know, we are having the four services. So, in a single port like 880, we can't open all the services because it will get in conflict, right? So, that's why you need to provide different types of port in case of for the each microservice. So, inventory microservice is off now and also it's working fine. Next, we will create the like payment service. Okay. It will also having some uh, similar kind of thing. So, let's create one package for this first. Like, uh, we need to first uh, create one controller and then like. Uh, okay let's uh, create one package sorry new package controller okay so here actually we can like uh, create another class like payment controller okay okay we can annotate it with rest controller and then we need to provide some request mapping okay here actually we'll put some API like uh, payment for example so that we can easily understand right next we can what you can do here same actually as we are did for the inventory same thing we can did for this inventory ms also like uh, we can create two endpoints one is the debit another one is the credit so let's create for the time being i'm keeping as a void then debit okay it will be as a post mapping okay and it will be a debit next we can create another one for credit okay okay so uh, so for this actually we need uh, one request response structure so let's create those things new package create new class for example payment request DTO okay so we can keep like uh, in this request uh, what you can do we can like create uh, uh, user ID order ID and the amount private integer user ID okay next like uh, private for order id okay next amount so you can keep it as a double we can also keep it as a like uh, uh, like big decimal but uh, for the timing we can use this one then like we can use a getter setter and then to string okay 
okay so this is done now next like we will uh, prepare the response so let's copy paste this one response DTO and in the response uh, what the extra things we need like this CPU user but another one is the status so for the status we can create one enum okay like payment is approved or payment is rejected so let's create another enum over here like payment status okay and here maybe we can keep like payment approved or payment rejected okay so this is done now let's add this over here in the response Okay, and the variable fields will be status. Okay, so the response is done now. Request response is done. Next, uh, what you can do? We can obviously we can pass this one as a request body, but also like we need to create one service class. Request body and here we can payment request DTO same actually we can pass over here okay next we can create one service let's create another package okay so here actually uh, again it will like uh, we can uh, put uh, the amount based on the product ID so like let's create the class first new class like payment service okay there is a service then obviously like as we did for the inventory let's uh, i can copy it from over here all the things i can copy then i will just like uh, accordingly rename those things okay like here it will be a payment response payment response dto it will be a payment request DTO okay order ID user ID status and then we can set like instead of the product ID Okay. Actually, uh, for example, in the inventory map, it will be a like uh, kind of, uh, for example, let's say payment map. Okay. So I need to change this one. Okay and here actually we can keep like amount so it will be a double okay so let's say for the product ID one the amount is 500 okay next like for product ID two is a 1000 okay next like for the product three it will be a for example 700 okay okay next like uh, instead of the product id what about the user actually right so these are the mapping with the user id okay 
so it will be actually double or instead of quantity it will be a amount or maybe balance okay okay it will be a zero double okay now it's fine next like order id user id and status for the payment status let's say payment rejected and if the balance this particular balance is greater than or equal to dot get amount if so then what you can say payment is approved right okay now here actually we need to update the balance so here it will be a user id and then we can say balance whatever the balance we are getting from here we need to deduct with this amount right okay and what else we can set over here we can set only set amount that also you can get from the request detail or maybe we can just uh, copy paste from over here okay so this is overall done for this uh, payment if means we will fetch particular user id these are the mapped with the payment balance with the uh, like user balance actually mapping like this particular user id having 500 balance this to a uh, user user id is having 1000 and 3700 okay so this is done now in case of the we are going to okay the name is like debit okay and this will be a credit because it will be familiar with the payment kind of thing right so this will be a user id and then with the value what we need to update we need to update the requested amount right so this is uh, done for this one we need to clean this one save this one this is done now come to over here controller here actually we need to inject this payment service inject this payment service okay so from here we need to from the debit we need to call the debit one with this particular request and from here we need to return this one right okay we need to also provide the return type that's done from here also we need to call the credit service with this particular but here no return type is required so this is overall things for this payment one let's uh, try to run this one payment service run as java application so it will be start on 808 to port yeah and it is started at your ATP right so this is that means payment also st started successfully next like uh, I will create uh, the order micro service and then finally we will create the order orchestration service right let's create the order service micro service so payment micro service is done now now let's create the order micro service so what is the responsibilities for this order service so as we know like this particular order service is uh, responsible for taking the order means uh, initially whenever any request will come so those uh, particular request is come here and then it will actually uh, send uh, those request into the orchestration service right so let's create one controller for this like first create one package dot dot controller here actually create one class like for example let's say order controller order 
controller okay so obviously we need to annotate it with uh, the rest controller next we need to do some kind of mapping over here like request mapping and uh, what uh, it will be a kind of order so here actually we need to create two method like one is uh, mm, for create another one is for the like fetching the all orders so that we can check the status for this uh, like uh, suppose we have created three or four orders but uh, due to some reasons out of three or four uh, maybe two is success and other another means all other are fed so using the uh, all services we can check the status like what is the status of it is but also for this one also we need uh, like we need to pass one request so for that we need to create uh, some dto so that uh, also you can do let's uh, create those details for I will come later over here like for creating the order and get the order details just let create uh, another package for this one like create package and uh, package name should be something like uh, uh, maybe what we can do we can write uh, DTO okay okay next we can uh, like uh, uh, create those uh, services like order request order response then orchestra orchestra request orchestra orchestra response okay those kind of request and uh, response we need to create because from here means uh, we need to call the order service and from the orchestrator service also we need to get some response so request and response also we need to pass from here so that's why orchestrator request also is needed over here right because we are going to call this from here so we need four request and response dto okay and this dto are something look like something this one okay and in the response what do we need to do we need to like uh, create the status file so that we can manage the status and it will be something look like this so like uh, in the response this is done and here also like uh, yeah okay and what will be the order status so order will be like created cancelled and completed so this and i'm also we have created over here okay so request and response wise is done now now again like we can go back to the controller section in the controller so here actually okay one means we need to create the service actually service as well as the repository as well as one entity we need to create okay so let's create uh, step by step because this service little bit of tricky right so let's create another package called like entity okay and here actually we need to create the entity so for example the entity is the purchase order okay it will be look like something this id user id product id and price and the order status okay next like once the entity creation is done next also like we need to create one repository let's create another package dot repo and here actually we need to create the like repository okay like we need to create one interface for example like uh, purchase order repository okay and it will actually extend the reactive program as we are doing the reactive kind of thing so it will be the reactive CRUD repository right and here it will be we need to pass the entity purchase purchase order and ID is the EU ID okay 
and obviously will be annotated with the at the rate depository okay so repository creation is done now next what we can do uh, we need to create the order services okay let's create another package dot service okay create new class like order service okay obviously we should be annotated with at the rate service annotation okay so here actually we need to map like uh, the product id as we are saying like uh, uh, here actually we are going to use some tables and uh, those are will be the like uh, add jvc so that's why you can check the pom file of this one so we can the parent pom is getting used over here with that also you use the starter r2 jd r2 dbc dbc okay r2 h2 this is actually used okay so because like uh, we need to uh, save the order details okay so here actually we need to create one map which will actually map the product price so accordingly it will based on the check like the order will be created so let's create the map first okay so it will be a integer and double okay it will be something like uh, uh order price or maybe the product price let's this one it will be something like uh, map dot of so here actually you need to pass those things right like one comma for this uh, it's a hundred rupees next right for the product two it will be a 200 rupees next product 3 it will be a 300 rupees okay okay so this is done now next we will uh, like we need to create the means uh, for the create order and the like uh, get uh, all the product right so for create order so as we are going to use some kind of the reactive uh, uh, like a reactive program using the oil flux so that's why it will there is something uh, uh, like mono kind of thing we need to return from here okay It will be a purchase order. Create order. Okay. And here actually we need to pass the request. So what will be the request? Like it's a order request DTO. Order request DTO. Okay. Now here actually what you can do we need to like uh, annotate this particular repository the rate auto air private repository okay now using this we need to call this one repository dot what you can do we need to save right so so from this order actually we are having this order request so this particular request we need to convert into the entity right so for that we need to create one method like uh, convert this dto to entity so let's uh, so we need to call this dto to entity conversion and here we will actually pass the request so after that what we can do 
we can like what you need to call we need to call like do on next like suppose if this is done then what next we need to do we need to set the order id over here okay so from where you can get the id this is the id after that what you can do we can like next send the event to the like kafka right so for that what you can do we need to call actually there is a sync calls concept is there so using that we can like throw out the event to them so that actually we are going to do like something like we need to create another method for this one for example emit event for name it is and here actually we need to pass this request okay okay here actually okay here actually we need to auto air the sync sync dot many here actually we need to pass this request detail okay for example sync maybe So here we need to call this try emit next okay and here actually we need to convert means create one request from this uh, means from this request right so it will be okay here actually like get request using this okay okay this is done now next what we can do like we need to okay here actually we need to call this with this detail okay okay now okay now we just need to return this so that means what we are doing over here means in the create we are first like save the entity into the repository then on the next then we are like uh, set the order id and in the next we are like pushing this event to the kafka so that it will be successfully like uh, data can be like uh, uh, like data can be pushed into the kafka so from the kafka it will be read into the orchestration service okay so this is about this create order next what we can do we need to like uh, uh, write one another method which will actually fetch all the orders from the database and return into the like in one api so public so for the timing can like get all okay order okay so here what you can do from the repository dot find all okay and here actually what you can do we need to map it with some response right so map so here actually we are like uh, means as we are getting the entity so we need to like convert this entity to dto right so let's okay so I've already write this one just entity to DTO we don't need final over here don't worry so this is uh, this will actually return this uh, convert this uh, entity to DTO right so here actually we need to convert this one how can we do this like we just need to whatever the data will come so and like then entity to DTO we just need to return this one okay what return type it will be it will be the flux okay because as we are going to use this one for like a reactive wave flux we are using right so this is about this for the order service so this is done now so from the controller actually we need to 
like uh, we need to add those services in the controller so what we can do over here we just need to first first actually auto edit this order service okay next we can create for example timing i'm keeping as a void then create order okay so here actually we need to pass the request body okay it will be a no order request dto okay and it will be obviously it's a post mapping and create and from here we need to return dot flat map order service create order ok obviously we need to return so we need to provide some return type over here ok so this is done for the create next we can set for the all right means we need to get all the products so it will be a like for example all it will be a get orders so we don't need any request body over here what do we need just we just need to service dot get all order okay and it will be a flux instead of mono okay so this is done now next one point is left like for in case of the failure scenarios if something is failed from the like orchestrator so that particular thing actually communicate over here right so for that we need to write some kind of event means consumer we need to write which will actually consume those things right so let's create another package dot consumer and here actually we need to write one class okay for example order consumer okay it will be obviously marked as a kind of configuration okay next we need to create actually two bin like we need to like auto air private flux request dto flux next auto way okay for updating the service we can maybe create another service which will actually basically like uh, update the data or maybe uh, we can like uh, uh, create those things so maybe let's create another service which will actually update the update the order okay service so what we can do over here we can just put auto a private repo 
so here update order sorry whatever the response we will get from the orchestrator so that will come over here based on the response we need to update those things so repository repo dot find by id response dto dot get order id then do on next set what you can see you can set the status like uh, whatever the response will get from here dot get status on the next we need to update dot save or maybe what you can do here you can just uh, use something like uh, save okay okay so this is done now and what we can do we just need to return from over here so obviously we need to no, no void okay so update service is done now next what you can do from the consumer actually like uh, we need to use this uh, order update service order update service actually update service update okay next like uh, we need to create two bin actually one is a supplier and another one is the for like uh, uh, consumer so let's create first for the supplier okay return what we will return we will return actually flux okay so we need to mention the return type not object actually we need to return supplier we need the util one and then here we need to like uh, flux of request DTO or just data and request DTO okay so this will be done by here and this is the bin next actually we need to define of definition bin of the consumer okay so it will be a tricky one like uh, how we are going to do this one but except this one everything is like very simple Means there is a no complexity so we are just returning and it's a request and the return type of this one it will be a response okay now here okay actually we need to do on next 
so here what it will do maybe we can write something over here like uh, like uh, consuming plus c okay dot it will be look like something this one like here we are printing this whatever the consuming over here and then we are like accordingly response we are updating the order and then we are just returning this uh, here over here and all the functions we are doing over here in the update function so this is all about the like order service so what basically if you are going to summarize this one so like in the order microservice we are we have written two controller one is a create uh, two apis actually one is create order another one is for like uh, getting the all the orders so here actually we are order this means creating the order like it will uh, um, uh, create the means in data insert into the uh, database and then accordingly it will uh, set the order id and then accordingly like it will um, uh, push data into the kafka subscribe okay and then like uh, uh, for the gate all order it will face the data and then it will actually accordingly do the some mapping and then return data into the UI for like save uh, like uh, consuming the thing we have also like created one uh, update service and here actually um, in the consumer actually we are like uh, supply and consumer you define this is a consuming and this is a supplier this is push the data and this is uh, here we can get the data so this is the overall thing about the order microservice let's uh, try to run this service once okay it fails to start let's check like where it is saying that could not be found from where it is saying okay it's saying bean okay okay i forgot to provide the actually it is also a bean so that's why it's doing the issue okay okay these two are been actually let's try to run it again okay again it's failing okay okay understood actually we need to create the bean actually of those things so let's create the bean let's create another package actually call its configurations and here let's create uh, configurations on class configuration and it will be annotated with at the rate configuration okay okay let it class as a config okay let's rename it it's getting config conflict actually with the existing class and the created class okay next actually we need to create two bin actually something like this this two bin i created okay one for seeing another one is for the flux okay okay now this bin are created also now let's try to run this one again
yeah it started now as you can see i have not started actually in the back end kafka so that's why you are getting a lot so getting this kind of logs uh, so if i start the kafka then automatically it will uh, like connected now it can see the node are disconnected so this is the reason so for the timing i am like stopping this one order microservice next like we will uh, create the orchestrator ms so this is the only the last one once i will create this one then we can like uh, we will uh, check from the means postman like how the order is getting created how like uh, the status is changed so those kinds of thing we can check so let's create the last uh, order or just the microservice okay so uh, i'm creating this order microservice i already have created and i have already put it some code means written already code over here so just to reiterating this kind of microservices and all the services i have created using java 17 latest version and also spring boot 3 so as we know the for the latest version of the spring boot uh, is a 3 is going on so that's why i am trying to cover this demonstration with spring boot 3 and the java 17. so uh, like uh, as you know like uh, this is the kind of uh, whatever the we have service created like three service already created inventory payment order and this orchestrator was is the like uh, repending so that i'm going to like uh, going to create this create already created and uh, as you can see over here like uh, uh, just to define one thing Uh, here actually you can see the port and uh, these are the like definitions for the like uh, uh, processor actually for the spring cloud and the stream is this processor zero and the processor out this is order created and this for the order updated and these are the like services endpoint actual history like this is for the inventory actually we are going to call and this is for the payment so that means if some times if we are going to communicate with this miss these services then this is the configuration for this one right okay so that's why or maybe we can also open over here so this is the like configuration that we can uh, like for calling those uh, services we need to use this one so uh, like this is about the configuration and uh, form is also like similar kind of thing here we are just only use the parent form because already we have defined the parent form services right so that's all about this configuration wise now for the, because this is service is actually main service this particular service actually sitting in the main uh, as hard as i was shown in the earlier uh, earlier uh, like architecture diagram of the orchestrations uh, saga design pattern so this is one of the concept of this one don't forget to subscribe my channel and also please press the bell icon so then don't miss the any notifications from my channel let's create some uh, so for like Dito kind of thing already I have created like inventory request response then order request response payment so all request and response we need over here so because uh, this particular request because from this service actually we are going to create all the services right so for the inventory request we are having this one as I have shown earlier this is the response of the inventory this is the enum of this like uh, what we can show uh, if the inventory was available or not this is a kind of the orchestrator uh, request and this is the orchestrator response then order then order response then payment and the payment uh, response then payment status right so these are the like kind of the detail kind of things now like whenever it will come over here then initially it will overcome here right then it will call this order product so what it will do actually over here like here actually it will get the workflow order workflow so here actually you can see we have created two workflow one is the payment another for the inventory so if we go for the payment actually so this is the payment step so here actually you can see that we are creating the web client and then request DTO and here it's calling the debit right means debit service from the payment method we have already created in the payment services and after getting the response it's actually mapping those here and then it says the payment is approved if the status is like success then complete else it is failed same for the inventory is there so if we are going to the inventory one same here like if it is a deduct first if it is available then it's complete if else it is failed okay means if it is success is true then it is completed else failed so this is a kind of the 
like process in case of the revert we need to call this inventory dot right same for the payment step is there if it is a revert we need to do from the uh, payment step then uh, like we need to credit the payment right whatever the payment is directed from the actual balance user balance so that particular uh, like balance we need to add credit into their user account so that kind of things handle by in the you have defined in the revert sections right so this is for the like uh, debit the payment and this is for the revert the payment means in case of the failure scenario it will be called in case of success it will be called same for the like inventory one process it will be called in case of the success if in case of the revert we need to do then we need to revert this one so this is uh, the workflow so first we are defining the workflow and it is a list of workflow actually then here actually we are iterating right and based on if it is like if it is a success then we are calling the next in the next actually it is a iteration is going on then order we are not process if it is in case of fail we are showing say like order is not process successfully right and if it is success then we are uh, means like uh, uh, generate the response over here and uh, like something called the order is completed and uh, we are generating this dto so this is the like overall flow of this one in case of the in in case of the error then we are calling this revert error like how the revert is going on and here actually you can see it is actually like uh, call the revert services for the as i like workflows and the revert it will actually like revert and based on the revert inventory either inventory or payment step and based on the step it will actually call the revert services so that means it's a dynamic way kind of thing means in future if we are going to add another microservices for example uh, like which is actually deal with the kind of the delivery so suppose uh, if the payment is success uh, inventory is success but we are not able to deliver this successfully to the part, uh, in in parties in in customer right then on the same time also maybe we can um, roll back the order so in that time we can also maybe we can just add another workflow over here so that it will automatically taken care by this one so this is one of the benefit this is the in this uh, architecture so in this way like like we can uh, do those things and also we are defining the steps over, over here inventory and payment so if we are going to add another step so in that same time we can like add over here another step and automatically it will be taken care over here so this is all about this uh, orchestrator uh, design uh, I mean saga design pattern and as you know like how can we uh, like implement those microservices how like in means uh, uh, those microservices are talking each other uh, like uh, from the order to other microservices uh, there is a like uh, uh, kind of kafka is there it's a non blocking call and here also like we are using web flux so that the calls are going to the multiple services from one service it will be not blocked by anything it's a asynchronous right so this is all about this orchestrator microservice design, design pattern i am trying to demonstrate with uh, keeping one simple example if you guys have anything please do let me know in the comment section and like obviously like i will uh, like uh, try to uh, do some kind of uh, demo like uh, try to call one apis from the postman so that it will be look better so that i am going to next so let's check from the postman also so for demonstrating this one let's start the project one by one so like uh, let's start this payment order started payment started inventory started <coughs> and orchestrations also started it will take some time in the back end also like i've started this kafka as you can see so these are already started okay so next uh, we need to check like before going to over here so first check this in the payment service so it will map like user id wise balance right so user id 1 having the 500 balance user id 2 having 1k and then 3 is 700 right if we're going to the inventory so here we can check like uh, uh, this product two having three items one having two and the three is four so if i going to the two i have created this one so product id 2 and the user id 1 so if i going through this user id 2 and and like uh, 
user e2 and the user id1 right so we can see this uh, uh, like this inventory means product id2 having three items so only maximum we can three but here the user id1 having the 500 balance so let's check that means uh, this particular and this particular order actually having 200 price let's check the price of the order this 2 is having a 2 okay so that means okay so this is clear right? then is one user having 500 balance and this 2 is having uh, 3 items so we are only able to successfully place 2 like 2 items so let's try to hit uh, this one so it will be give a success response something like order created okay so 200 and product id2 is at 1 so let's check here as you can see order is completed means successfully the place is ordered next second third okay so then what you can see here two is successfully created right this is actually and third one is cancelled right meaning like uh, is we are having the 400 here already exhausted now we are having the 100 balance so that's why it's not allow us to create the like order right so that's why we are able to successfully place two and the next one is a cancel if we see again here is a created but after uh, do all the checkings it says like it's a cancelled order so that means only we are able to successfully place the two orders so this is all actually about uh, about uh, uh, choreography like uh, orchestrated data uh, saga design pattern so uh, like uh, we can see like all the things how it is working uh, how it is maintaining the distributed transactions uh, all the things right so all the things we have uh, seen over here we are also trying to demonstrate like how it is working in a multiple if we are going to use the multiple services right so uh, in the same time if each microservice having the individual databases then how the transaction are going to manage so already i discussed that can be managed into two ways one is a saga design pattern and a saga in the saga design pattern, actually two approaches one is a orchestration another one is a um, choreography so choreography i already covered in one of my video tutorials so that i will i will uh, provide in the description sections if you guys having anything please do let me know in the comment sections and also please don't forget to subscribe my channel and uh, thank you thanks for watching bye bye